In this question, we are tasked to figure out that there's some relation between the potential and the energy that it must be required for the Schrodinger equation for normalizable solutions. So we are hinted to rewrite the Schrodinger equation in something like this form right here. Specifically, we have the curvature expressed as some difference between the potential energy and the, the regular energy and and the uh, the wave function right here. So we can begin with, the rela with one relation here where the potential energy is greater than the energy here. So we'll start with this one first. Now, if that's true, assuming that this is true, that means that this relationship right here is going to be positive. Right? So if that's positive, that means this whole term is positive, which means that the double derivative, the second derivative, or the curvature of the wave function happens to be positive. So let's go ahead and write out in... Let's go ahead and draw this wave function where this is psi and this is x, right? So if we have a positive psi, a positive wave function, that means it exists in this quadrant right here, and we know that the curvature is positive, that means that the wave function is going to look something like this, right? Similarly, um, assuming that this, uh, for this case right here, if we have a negative wave function, that means this whole term is going to be negative since this is still positive, right? Which means that the curvature is going to be negative, right? So for a negative wave function, it's going to exist down here. And then this whole, since, since this is negative, that means this whole term is going to be negative, which means this curvature is negative, which means it's going to bend away from the x-axis right here, the spatial axis right here. Um, so... I mean, this is a wave function, but it's not a very good one, right? Because we know that the wave function has to can't blow up. And as you can see here, it's blowing up this way and it's blowing up this way. Same thing for here. So if we just look at one, if, you, if we did the uh, probability density squared of these things, we would see that if we integrated, it's going to blow up as it goes off to infinity here. And that is not good for normalizable solutions. So... We know that this is not the case here. So if we have a different relationship between these two where this is where the energy is actually greater than that, that means that this term will actually be negative. So we'll go ahead and erase that. So this term is actually going to be negative. And we'll change, uh, let me change these here. That means, so... If this is negative and we have a positive wave function, that means the curvature is going to be negative. So that means that the wave function is going to look like this, already looking good. And then if we have a negative wave function, which means it exists down here, that means that this negative will be mixed with this negative. Therefore, the curvature is going to be positive. It's going to curve up in this quadrant down here which means it's going to look like something like that, which is great. So whenever we do like the probability density, um, and integrate it over time, that means that this is actually going to, you know, be a discrete value. It's not going to go, or not discrete value, it's going to go down to uh, some some actual um, quantity that's not infinity. And same thing with this one, right? It's not going to blow, blow up to to, um, to infinity, which means that uh, this is actually the case that we want. And in the question, this is actually the case that, um, that we were aiming to solve at. So in summary, uh, we got to have some energy that's greater than the potential for normalizable solutions to exist for the Schrodinger equation.